Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 20 on our series of making a custom character controller in Unity. In this video, we're going to start building our vehicle character by actually building the objects of the character, as well as setting up our initial parts of our vehicle controller script so that we have a full and complete scene where we can press keyboard buttons and have them react properly to our vehicle and make it move. There's a lot to get into in this one, so let's dive into Unity and get started here. So the first thing we're going to do is going to create our character object in our scene. And this is actually going to be a uh, kind of a series of game objects that are rigged together because we're going to actually need a model for our vehicle. We're going to need our camera setup that will follow our camera or follow our character around. Um, and so we're going to put all these pieces together right now. First thing we're going to do is go up to game object and go create empty. I'm going to make sure to reset the transform so that it's at zero, zero, zero. And I'm going to name this vehicle character. Now this is going to be the object that we actually put our vehicle controller on, um, but it's not going to be what shows us the character itself. It's not going to show the vehicle model. And the reason for that I'll get into as we create it, which is what we're going to do right now actually. So we're going to right click on here and we're going to say create empty, or no, sorry not create empty, create 3D object cube. And this is automatically now parented to the vehicle character. And this I'm going to call vehicle model. Now the reason I didn't just make a vehicle model and put, you know, plan to put the controller on that is that right now we just have a cube which really doesn't look that good. I'm going to kind of um, shape and size this model and that means I'm going to be messing with the scale of it and once you mess with the scale of something it can oftentimes affect how it moves within the world because it's at a different local scale than the world is. So making sure that it's parented to something that has a scale of 1, 1, 1 ensures that you don't have any kind of um, weirdness in your spatial motion. So let's actually do a little bit of modeling with this. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change its scale to about um, 1 point, or we'll make it 1.5 on the x value so it's a little bit wider. We'll make it a full 2 um, so we'll cut it to half on the Y so that it's a little bit squatter. And then we'll make it a full 2 on the Z, actually 2.5 on the Z. So it's like kind of a long, a little bit flatter uh, chassis. In addition, we know it's um, only 0.5 tall, so we can make it half of that up so it's setting right on the ground. So we'll make it 0.25 over the, off the ground so that if we were to go right on ground, whoops, go to an isometric view and right on ground level, we can see that that's sitting right on, <clears throat> right on that zero plane. Um, so it's sitting right on the ground. Let's get out of isometric view. So that is our vehicle. Right now obviously we can't see it too well though because it's white on a white uh, ground. So let's create a material quickly for this as well. I'm going to go into our materials folder and create a new material and we'll call this vehicle. And I'm going to keep it just the standard shader but we'll make it like a teal kind of color of an old Chevy convertible look. Um, I'll add a little bit more smoothness, make it a little bit shiny. That looks good. And we'll throw that onto. You can either drag the vehicle material right onto the object or onto it in the vehicle model here. You'll note you can't actually put it on the vehicle character because that doesn't have any um, component that would take a material. But that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing I want to do is. Um, put a couple, have a way of seeing which way is front and back for this vehicle because right now we just have a, um, what is an essentially a scaled cube, so the front and the back look exactly the same as do both sides. So I'm going to add to our vehicle mod model, I'm going to add another, three, actually I'm going to add this to the vehicle character as well because again, because this has this weird scale, it's going to make things scale funny. So I'm going to add to the vehicle character, 3D object sphere. I'm going to make this sphere about 0.1 in all scales. 
and then I'm going to we'll zoom in here a little bit. I'm just going to hold this back on the Z axis until it sticks out a little bit. A little bit difficult to see. Here we go. Sticks out just a little bit from the back of the car. You can see it in the uh, game view a little bit better there. Um, may actually make this 0.2 in scale, at least on the X and Y. We'll keep the Z at 0.1. That works. And then I'm just going to nudge it also on the Z, or on, rather on the X axis over about, what's that, negative 0.472. Sure, that works fine. I'm going to create another material in our materials folder, call this brake light. I'm going to change that to red, and a little bit darker red. And I'm going to add that to this sphere. And I'm going to rename this actually. Break light L. I'm going to right click and duplicate that in our hierarchy. Rename it to break, uh, break light R, and we're just going to get rid of that negative, keep the 0.472. So now we have just these kind of simple brake lights on the back of our car. Let me quickly look here and see that they're not like floating. Nope, that works perfectly. Okay, lastly, we need to um, make our camera follow our car. Kind of is right now here, as you see, but as you'll notice, if I were to take the vehicle character and start moving it, it could get off camera. What we want is it actually to physically follow, uh, our camera to physically follow the vehicle wherever it goes. I'm going to reset this. Um, and there's two ways of doing that. The first is you could put a script on your camera to say every frame or however often it needs to, when the, when the vehicle moves, you know, check where its position is and position yourself accordingly. That's one way to do it. The other way, which is actually a lot easier, is we can just parent the camera to the vehicle as well, and then it will just kind of be part of this whole rig in the same way that the brake lights and the model move with the vehicle, so will the camera. So we're just going to actually take our main camera, drag it onto the vehicle character. You notice it doesn't move. However, um, now when we move the camera, or now when we move the vehicle, we see that it doesn't really appear to change in our camera view because the camera is following at the exact position no matter where we go with it. We can move it left and right, does the same thing. Now this isn't the perfect position and that's really going to be something that's just kind of you're going to have to eyeball. Um, let's see where we think this looks pretty good. We can move it about there. I think I want it to be a little bit up and um, we'll rotate on the x-axis to point it down a little bit. So that gives us good, we can still see in front of us pretty well, but we've also got a little bit of a, still kind of a top-down feel, um, which will work well as we're driving around. So that's the majority of what we need to do here, because now, like I say again, we can take our vehicle character. Oh, if you wanted to follow this positioning exactly, um, the camera's position is 1.72 in the Y, negative 4.05. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. We'll just make that negative 4 and 1.75. And then it's what we'll call 14 degrees on X. So there we go. If you want, like I say, if you want to follow exactly, that's what those are. Um, I'm also going to rename this to be the chase camera rather than the main camera. We'll do that. And be, but be sure to keep it tagged as the main camera because we will want to be controlling this as the main camera right now. So with all that, now we'll see that if I take my vehicle character and I move it forward, I can turn it side to side. Not actually turning it really shows you that it's, it's turning in the space, but the camera's position is going to stay the same no matter what. Reset that once more. And now all we need to do is add our vehicle controller script to the vehicle character so that we can much like our walking controller, start giving it commands when we um, press the right keys on our keyboard. So what we're going to do here now is in the same vein that we have our walking controller, we're going to open up our vehicle controls folder and we're going to create a new C-sharp script called 
vehicle controller. And we can simply drag and drop that right onto our vehicle character so that our vehicle character makes sure that you just have the transform as well as this vehicle controller script. From here we can now finally open up MonoDevelop and start looking at how we want to um, what code we want to put in to adjust our vehicle controller as compared to our base controller class as well as our walking controller. So here in MonoDevelop I've got our vehicle controller script open as well as the walking controller and controller classes because there's going to be a few things we'll reference in here. Um, the first thing and the most important we'll recall with the walking controller is that it, it inherits from controller and that's going to get us access to things like the protected rigid body and collider, as well as um, being able to check if there is um, an input being read. So let's quickly do that. We're going to change mono behavior to controller. We'll save that. And the other thing that we really need, the most important thing, is this right here, this function that we had in our walking controller, public override void read input. And this is what it takes in whatever keyboard presses we have on a given frame being passed in from our input manager and converts those into commands. So let's actually just copy all this right here and paste that, we can delete these two, and paste that right into our vehicle controller and we'll add in that closing bracket. And this is where we're actually going to register and execute vehicle controls. For now, I don't want to just clean that up a little. Um, we're not going to get right into, you know, making physics motions and accelerating and all that. That's going to be our next video where we're going to actually do accelerating and steering, all the fun stuff. Right now, I just want to make sure that this controller is working properly. So all I'm going to do is let's quickly look here and see what is our this was our jump button, data button zero, which is our space bar, um, is how we checked to see if we were going to going to jump on a given frame. So that's going to be our acceleration for her vehicle, as we discussed in our planning se um, segment. So let's copy this as well from our walking controller, and we'll paste it here. And so what this is going to do is this is going to tell us are we pressing down the jump button or now what's the accelerate button. So if this does register as true we can say debug.log accelerating vehicle. Obviously we're not doing that right now but that's what we would be doing so we're just going to debug to represent that. So with this information here we now should have a working controller system. However, there is one more thing we need back in our Unity scene, which we actually have in our prefabs folder down here, which is our input manager prefab. This right here is what actually is going to be tracking our presses and then passing them to whatever is the controller of the moment. So let's drag that into our scene. And now we can make sure we have right here, this is the controller. This is what tells our input manager who to tell about a keyboard press. So what we can do is we can gr grab our vehicle character, which has a controller component, and therefore can be placed right in there. So with that in there, we can save our scene, hit play, and what we should now see is that when we hit button zero, the space button, in our console we should log vehicle accelerating. So let's press that space bar and there it appears. And now you'll notice it also is checking, it's not just checking the first time that we press it, it's every single frame that we press it, we're getting more and more logs of accelerating vehicle. We had to make some um, accommodations for this when we were doing things like jumping because we didn't want, or attacking or interacting, because we didn't want multiple frames going over and over again. However, this works perfectly for something like accelerating a vehicle because when you press down on the accelerator or the brake pad, you are on the brake rather, you want to get that continuous action happening. So this is going to work perfectly for us and that's what we're going to dive into in our next video where we start making our vehicle move with accelerating and steering. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.